So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for the Foreign Language and Area Studies Fellowships Info Session. My name is Lenny Ureña Valerio, and I'm the Associate Director for Program Development in the Latin American Iberian Institute, and I also serve as FLAS Coordinator. And FLAS, um, it's a generous grant that we receive from the U.S. Department of Education. Um, it's a Title VI grant um, that encourage the study of less commonly taught mo modern foreign languages in combination with area studies, international studies, or international aspects of professional studies. So, so the U.S. Department of Education has given the LAII these funds to support Latin American studies, that is the area studies that we represent, and to study less commonly languages, such as in our case during the academic year is Nahuatl, Portuguese, Quechua, and Yucatec Maya. Students can um, study other less commonly taught languages in summer. Um, but Nahuatl, Portuguese, Quechua, and Yucatec Maya are the pre-approved ones for the academic year because we have the resources of teaching them here at UNM. Um, so um, you study with these funds, you study the language, but also the area studies. So you study the culture, um, society, the, the history of the region in which the language is spoken. There are two types of class, the academic year fellowship and the summer fellowship. So the academic year fellowship is to um, do approved coursework here at UNM or through an approved UNM study abroad. And at the graduate level, it could be used for dissertation research or writing during the academic year. The summer fellowships is for intensive language study during the summer, either in a domestic or an international program. To be eligible for this award, um, since these are federal funding, the applicants uh, must be US citizen, nationals, or permanent residents. They also need to be full-time UNM student in any discipline um, who are focusing on the study of Latin America or have an interest in Latin America. Students could be current students or incoming students incoming in at the graduate level. Um, student, uh, grad, graduate students who want to learn the language at the beginning level, they must have advanced knowledge of another Latin American language in order to be able to receive the class. Typically, this other language is Spanish because it's the commonly taught language from Latin America that people are exposed to it in school before coming to the university. Um, current or transfer undergraduate students are eligible to apply. And, but the caveat with the undergraduate students is that they have to have at least one year of the language to um, be eligible for the fellowship. So they can only apply at the intermediate or advanced levels. Um, Native speakers, for obvious reasons, are not eligible to apply because the purpose of BLAST is to um, um, help students gain proficiency in the language. And, um, but heritage speakers are eligible to apply because these are uh, people who, at home, they're exposed to the language, but they don't have any formal training. And so they still need to gain proficiency. And that will be the case, for example, some um, families here in New Mexico where they speak at home now, but they never receive formal training now. And if you're already at the near native level of fluency, then you're a, a, lo a low priority for class. Okay. So what are the requirements of the fellowship if you receive it for the academic year. You will have to be registered full-time 
That means 12 credits for undergraduate students and nine credits for graduate students. You will need to take one language course each semester in fall and spring. And you, you will need to take at least one area studies course. And the area studies course must be um, three credits or more. And you take one in fall and one in, in spring. Um, at the beginning of the fellowship, your language instructor will do a pre-fellowship language assessment, which is a series of yes and no questions that the U.S. Department of Education has designed for this award. And then at the end of the tenure of your award, your instructor will do a post-fellowship language assessment. It will be the same set of questions, but the purpose is to um, measure progress so the goal is to have more yeses by the end than when you started. And what it asks is different skills. Can you mail a letter in if you're studying Portuguese in Brazil and so on? Um, you also have to um, do a post-fellowship report. And, and that's done through the U.S. Department of Education. Um, it, it's a web portal called IRIS. And in that report, you will enter all the courses that you took throughout the academic year uh, and also the grades and the number of credits that you took. And then post-graduation, the U.S. Department of Education does career tracking, which is a series of survey that you will fill out once you graduate every two years for a total of four times. Um, the proficiency exam at the end of the fellowship, um, um, we don't have it at the time, um, but we hope um, to do it in-house in future years. Um, and some summer programs, they do um, give a proficiency exam. So there are some specific guidelines for the area studies course requirement here. And uh, we have on our website, every, every semester we publish a list of approved courses that um, are in the area of Latin American studies. If a course is not listed there, or if, if it's not clear that it has at least 40% of Latin American content, we have a form which you will fill out to make sure that you make arrangement with your professor to make sure that that class fulfills the area studies requirement. Um, audited courses are not eligible. You should be taking the courses at the required ones to um, as the um, letter grade. Um, for a letter grade, you cannot take it pass fail. And if you are going to meet the requirement with an independent study that needs pre-approval. So you will need to give me the uh, a syllabus and the um, CV of the instructor so that I can submit it to our program coordinator in Washington, D.C. so they can approve that course. And the requirement is you take one area studies course and that's separate from the language course. Um, so you have to take at least two required courses each semester, one to fulfill the area studies and one to fulfill the language. You cannot use the same to fulfill both. Okay. So for summer, um, the requirement is to enroll in an intensive language program. I mentioned before, it could be a domestic program or one in Latin America. And that program should give you the instruction of the language that is equivalent to one academic year of language here. And how do they measure that? Well, for people studying the language at the beginning or intermediate level, that should be 100, 140 hours of classroom instruction in that language. And for advanced, which is 
30 years or above of the language, it's 120 contact hours. And the program, the minimum length is six weeks. So if you take a six week program and you, you are at the beginning or intermediate level, you probably need to meet like five times a week for six hours. So it's, it's very intense training. Um, and like the academic, um, the academic uh, year fellowship, there is the pre and post fellowship proficiency evaluation that you will need to um, meet with your instructor to fill those out. You also need to send a report to um, the U.S. Department of Education reporting the grades that you took in this program that you gained. And then the, the U.S. Department of Education will also do post-graduation career tracking. So how much do you get with this fellowship? At the graduate level during the academic year, you get um, the class provides a uh, 20,000 stipend and up to $18,000 in tuition and fees, and that includes health insurance for graduate students. For undergraduate students, it provides a $5,000 stipend and up to $10,000 in tuition and fees. And the academic year fellowships are awarded on a one-year basis. If you already have one, you will have, it, it doesn't renew, you will have to apply again if you want it for a second year. And you have to go through this, through the competition. Um, the summer fellowships provides the same amount to both undergraduate and graduate students. And that is um, up to $5,000 in tuition and fees for the summer program and uh, um, a stipend of $2,500. And depending on whether we have um, funding available, you may also receive up to $1,000 to support um, your travel. So for the airfare. And let me go back. One thing about the airfare is that you need to talk to me about um, your airfare because these are federal funding and we need to follow the Fly America Act, which means that your travel must be on a U.S. carrier from here to the country. But those are federal guidelines. So if you receive a travel award, don't go running buying your airfare without talking to me. Okay. So... The applications materials are found on our website if you go to student funding, but you will need to submit a FLAS application form which students submit via Qualtrics and on our website this um, URL addresses are there. You will have to submit unofficial transcripts. You will have to submit a CV or a resume two letters of recommendation from faculty members. One of the letters must address the applicant's linguistic skills or ability to learn a foreign language in the case you are applying as a beginning level. You will also need to submit a two to three page double space statement of purpose. And you need to submit, if you're a continuing student or a, a current UNM student, you need to contact the Office of Financial Aid and request them to send us a need analysis form. And there are instructions on the applications on how to do that. But if you're an incoming student to UNM, um, you will need to um, attach the student aid report that you get once you submit the FAFSA. And with those um, instruments, we can evaluate your need for this um, award. And if you're applying for summer, we also require you to submit a summer program information and budget, which is, um, it could be a Word document or a PDF where you basically um, include the name of the program, the location, the dates, and the program costs. Okay. 
The statement of purpose is um, one of the most important pieces of the application uh, materials. As I mentioned, it has to be two to three pages double space. You have to state there your intended language of study, the relevance of the chosen language to your academic training and a career and career goals. Um, and also it helps to include information about your interest in Latin America or the studies that you have already carried out in Latin America. And if you're a graduate student and you're requesting the funds for the beginning level of the language, you must address in your statement that you have advanced level skills in another language of Latin America. Okay. And um, it's very important for you to state there also your um, how the area studies, so your formation in Latin America and the chosen language um, will help you further your academic and professional goals. And for this um, summer fellowship, if you're applying for that one, it also makes sense to include in that statement why you're choosing this summer long, uh, uh, language program. Why it makes sense to go to a summer language program in Sao Paulo in Brazil versus let's say Rio de Janeiro, okay? So we evaluate the applications foremost on merit, academic merit. That's why we ask for transcripts, we ask for letters of recommendation, and your CV where you show the awards and the honors you achieve. Um, but um, we also evaluate the re relevance of the language that you want to pursue and the field, so Latin America, the, the, the connection that those two have to your academic and career goals. The other thing that we evaluate, and this is on when, when we have two equally qualified students, when we have two people who are tied in the merits and everything else, we use financial need and the person that demonstrates more financial need, then we give the fellowship to that person. And also students in the professional school and STEM fields and those planning a career in US government service, business, education, and the nonprofit sectors, we also give them priority. So we have um, throughout the year accumulated a series of questions that students typical questions that the student have regarding the fellowship. And one of them is, if I'm a graduate student, can I simultaneously hold the Title VI class fellowship and an additional assistantship of fellowship? The short answer, yes. Um, with class, you are allowed to work 10 hours a week, which is, it will be a 0.25 FDE graduate assistantship. Um, also, um, if you receive another fellowship, talk to me because um, sometimes you can combine them, especially if the fellowship was awarded with state funding or university funding that do not come from federal funding. But if you receive something from the federal government, then we need to, the class students cannot double pay. So let's say if you have an NSF and the NSF is covering your health insurance, that cannot cover your health insurance and so on. So, and that's something that I go over with, with, all, um, with the applicants. So we never had an issue with that. The other question is, if I receive a Title VI plus fellowship for next academic year, can I assume that I will receive the award automatically the following year? No, you have to go through the competition and be selected again to receive the funding. Um, can I accept the academic year plus fellowship for one semester? No, unless specifically you were awarded for one semester, which happened this year just with undergraduate students, and this is one-time exception. 
moving forward, everybody's getting it for two semesters. So if you accept the fellowship, it's with the commitment that you will do fall and spring. If something happens, then we will need to, um, you, you will need to perfect the funding and then we will give the funding to another student. Okay, if I need to demonstrate a certain proficiency level to qualify for the fellowship, for example, how do you, as an undergraduate, how do you show that you have intermediate level for academic year? Must my transcript support my stated proficiencies? So typically, yes. So if you have previous courses that we see in your transcript, that's the easiest way for us to make sure that you can study the language at the intermediate level or above. Um, sometimes when you have this training more informally, let's say that you live for a whole year in Latin America and you have advanced Spanish language skills, but you don't have that in your transcript, what I usually do is that I try to, to put you in touch with a Spanish instructor so you can have a short meeting and they can evaluate your skill and, and, uh, and send us an email or a statement to that effect. Um, and also the, the letter, one of your um, recommendation letters must address your um, linguistic skills. So that's another way of how, you know, typically, especially undergraduate students, um, we advise them to go to the instructor who they have in Portuguese, beginning level to write the, the second letter of recommendation because then they can say um, this student, they have these skills to continue to intermediate and so on. So the application deadline is we need to have everything no later than February 22nd by 11.59 p.m. And you submit everything except your the letters of recommendation. The letters of recommendation should be sent to us, um, to the LAI business email address that I have in the next slide. And if you have, if you need more information, I know I've covered a lot. So once you leave the possession, there are a lot of things that uh, you'll forget. I'm here, you can always um, make an appointment with me and meet or Zoom meeting is fine or an email. And we'll also have a Q&A info session in January, later in January, I believe it's the 24th of January. So as you're going through the application, if you have questions, it would be good to join that info session so you can get specific answers. And so the letters of recommendation should be sent to this LAII business at unm.edu. And as I mentioned, if you have questions about the, the you know, eligibility requirements for BLAS, feel free to contact me. That's my email address. But if you have technical issues with the application, uh, if there's a glitch on Qualtrics, please email laibusiness at unm.edu. Okay, now is the Q&A session. And I want to remind everybody that we are recording the session. So if you allow us to have your voice <laughs> recording with the question, that'll be great. We'll include the Q&A session, but if you don't allow us, we'll just cut that part from the, the recording will place on our website. Okay. Any question? Stop sharing. Yes. Um, for the, the language evaluation slash recommendation letter, does that have to be from a UNM faculty member or can it be from like my faculty that actually did language study with me in undergrad? Yes, it could be from a previous institution. It could even be, for example, if you worked in Latin America and you had um, um, an advisor there, they can write that letter. 
So you have to have an academic letter. So uh, typically your advisor here who knows your research and your work, work the most will write one. And then whoever knows your language skills, then that person will write the second one. That makes sense. Yeah. It's so is it only good for two years then is to use the max? No, no, no. There's no maximum. Because yeah. um you can have it for three years, but you have to go through the um competition. Are all of you graduate students? I graduate in um in May with my bachelor's and I'm going to grad school. Here, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm doing the dual program with LLSS and the American Studies. Perfect. Perfect. Sometimes students who are graduating in May, they want to apply for the summer one, but okay. they're gonna go to another institution. So if you're graduating in May, but but not entering into a graduate program at UNM, then you wouldn't be eligible. But in your case, you you are eligible. Any question about the summer fellowship? So are there pre-approved summer programs or ones that they recommend, or do you just choose a random summer program and show that it fulfills the 140 hour language requirement? So CLASP, the Consortium of Latin American Studies program, and I'll, I'll give you the, um, email, the URL for the organization. At the beginning of spring, they post on their website pre-approved class eligible programs for indigenous languages, also for Haitian Creole and Portuguese languages. And if, if you find some a program there, that's the safer, safest way because it's already being approved by the US Department of Education. It's through a flash granting institution. But if you are interested in attending a program that is not there, then you work with me and then I'll tell you what we need to submit to have that program approved. Mainly we need to make sure that it complies with the minimum of six week, the duration of the program, and also that it's meeting the number of contact hours based on your level of the language. But it's something that you'll work with me to have it approved. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so you, I assume these are two separate applications if I want to apply for the year also summer? Yes, but the deadline is still better. It's the same. And, and um, so the thing is that we're asking people to submit basically two applications with small variation. Mm -hmm. We understand that, but that will help us make sure that, you know, summer evaluations are evaluated independently from the academic year one. So one competition doesn't have a bearing on the other, if that makes sense. And it's, um, Basically, if you're applying for both, most of the, you just need to put two copies in different <laughs> Qualtrics portals. So they don't have to be entirely different. I mean, obviously, there will be specificity depending on the summer program. So I will but say that the, the statement will need to change because you need to justify why you want to go to that program, um, how the language and and, and support your career goal, that they'll be the same, hopefully. <laughs> Some people, they apply for one language in summer and another language for the academic year, hmm. which is also perfectly fine. Um, but you need to um, justify the need of each language on vis-a-vis -vis your goals or research or... Um, but... The transcripts remain the same. The, um, the academic 
and, and language letters of recommendations will be, if not the same, very similar. And uh, um, the application has, uh, both applications have a lot of overlap. And the, the other difference with summer language is that um, piece at the end where you have to give us information about the summer language program, with the budget and location and the dates. Another question that I typically get with the summer class is, can I have an FRG, a field research grant, and a class at the same time? Um, you can receive both, but you have to time it so you don't overlap. You're not doing research work doing your summer language program. So you have to show that either you're doing the summer language during the first part of your summer and then the field research work or the other way around. But they, they cannot be like, when you're giving funds for plants, you should be doing intensive language study. Very straightforward, right? <laughs> now there, there, there's a lot of information and a, a, a lot to digest. But as I mentioned, if you have any questions during the process, just feel free to email me. And I advise you to contact your recommenders as early as possible to give them enough time to submit the letters. Also, when uh, contacting the UNM Office of Financial Aid, make sure that you're submitting your request at least 10 days before uh, the due date to make sure that we receive those financial need analysis forms from them. And if you need to, well, I don't think it's the case here because all of you are current students, but I would just mention for the recording, if you are an incoming student and you haven't fill out the FAFSA and do that as quickly as possible for the 2023-2024 year. And if you don't have a FAFSA with the university, I'm pretty sure you will need to submit one so they can get that financial information. Um, what else, what other tips do I have for you? Um, oh, yes, I have a question. Would you like us to like attach transcripts for the like, Spanish advanced proficiency in addition to the Portuguese or the, the, the for me, Portuguese, the classes that I've already taken? Or do you not need those for Spanish? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, would you be applying for Portuguese again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, since they'll show in your transcript your courses, we don't need them. And also, you only need to prove advanced level if you're applying for beginning level of a language. So you'll be applying for intermediate, right? Oh, I see. So once you're intermediate as a graduate student, you don't need that to put advanced skills. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if, if you've never taken Quechua and are applying as a graduate student, not undergraduate student, graduate students, they need to have the first year. But if you're applying for Quechua, then um, if your transcript doesn't already show that you have advanced skills in Spanish or Portuguese or any other language, um, then I will advise you to meet with a, an instructor or someone with um, um, skills to evaluate you in that language skills and authority to evaluate the language. <laughs> but the easiest way to prove advanced level of proficiency is, is the transcripts. So if you have, if you have to dig out all transcripts <laughs> to include those, they'll be very helpful. Okay. Well, thank you so much for attending and yeah, feel free to contact me without any other questions.